All right, what's up everybody? This is going to be an explanation for Omkar and Forrest. Problem E of Code Force is around 724. Now, just as a disclaimer, the solution to this problem is very short and kind of cruel. So first of all, if you didn't solve this problem and got trolled by a solution, I apologize in advance. And two, um, this means that I'm pretty much not going to go over any implementation details whatsoever. I'm just going to go over the motivation behind how you get to the final formula. So I think it's actually like easier to explain. It's easier to give you the formula first and then explain how we got this formula in the first place. So if we let, for each test case, if we let n, obviously n is equal to number of rows, m is equal to the number of columns, and we define a third variable k, k is equal to the frequency of um, pound signs in our input, in our, or in our test case. And so this represents like how many spots can be a number that doesn't necessarily have to be zero. And so what, and so the final formula will look something like two to the power of k minus k over n times m, where this part over here is floor division. So this is zero if k is strictly less than n and m, and it's equal to one if k is equal to n and m. In other words, if the entire grid is full of pound signs. Okay, so you might be thinking, this is a really simple formula. How did I not get this officially? Well, I mean, the thinking behind this formula is somewhat complicated. So, I'll, or it's not super complicated, but like it's not trivial. So I guess I'll go through that right now. So let's assume we have a five by five input grid and it looks something like this. Um, hold on, that's drawn really badly. If we have something like this. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of different notation here. So. If a, if a square is filled in, this is going to be equal to zero. And if a square is not filled in, this is going to be equal to a pound sign. So let's assume that our input is equal to, um, let's assume like, for example, this square is forced to be a zero, this square is forced to be a zero, and maybe like this square as well is forced to be a zero. So what, the, so what this means is that, um, let me actually make this grid a little bit smaller so that it's easier to understand. I'll make it three by three. So we're working with the same grid over here. And so if we start with this grid, let's assume that we, we want to first think about what subset, if we were to fix any subset of these white cells, which are pound signs, if we want to fix some subset of them to be zeros, how can we fill in the remaining numbers? So what I mean by that is, for example, if we took, I'll just put the input grid up here. Um, this is what our input looks like. Looks like, And so let's assume, let's just first look at this example over here, where this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, because of our test case. And let's say we force this square over here and this square over here to be zero. So if we force these, this subset of these, oh, of these, um, white spots to be zero, how can we fill in the remaining white spots such that these remaining white spots have karma values strictly greater than one? So the way we can do that is this number over here will become one, this number over here will become one, this number over here will become one, and this number over here will become two. If you notice, this number over here, the only number that this can become is one, because if we make this at any number higher than one, then it's going to be adjacent, then the adjacent difference between this number and zero is going to be strictly greater than one, which will violate one of our um, conditions. And so the same logic essentially applies to this number over here and this number over here. So all three of these have to be one. And because all of these numbers have to be one, this number over here has to either be a zero or a two. But we assume that out of a subset of um, like white squares that we choose to be zero, um, this is not included in the subset, so this cell has to be a positive number. So in actuality, the only choice we have for this case is two. So if we were to choose a subset of these white cells as this square and this square over here, there is exactly one way to do it. Okay, so that seems interesting, right? How about let's work with another subset? In this case, 
Let's work with a subset where um, obviously these three are zero. And then let's assume that this cell over here is the only zero that's forced. Then over here, this, this tree has to have a karma value of one. This tree has to have a karma value of one. This tree has to have a karma value of one. This is also one. And I believe this is two. Yeah. So there's also exactly one way to fill in the grid after fixing some subset, after fixing this particular subset of white cells. So you might start to notice a pattern here. And the pattern is this. If we have some arbitrary grid, so like for example, if we have like a larger grid and this cell is zero, this cell is zero, this cell is zero, and so on, there's exactly one way to fill in the rest of these numbers to have karma values strictly greater than zero out of the cells that we haven't put in yet. And we do this by assigning the minimum Manhattan distance each cell it has to any cell that's labeled as zero. So for example, if we were to imagine doing a multi-source BFS, um, so multi-source BFS, we imagine that this cell over here becomes one, this becomes one, this is one, 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 right? Because all of these cells are exact, have Manhattan distance of one to a given zero. And so we repeat this process like going out in this BFS logic where this becomes two, this becomes two, 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 two. And then we keep on going out and we go out like one more layer where this becomes three, this is three, uh, three, three. And then this over here, one more layer, this is four. And so this is the only way we can actually fill in this grid. And the reason why is this. We know that this grid, or like if we were to create like this BFS distance grid as an assignment of values, this will always be valid because one, the adjacent val, any two cells will have a difference of at most one. And the reason why is because if we have, if we were to have two cells that have a difference of two or more, then that's not a valid um, BFS distance assignment. Because if we have like a minimum distance of X, for this cell, and then right next to it, we have a minimum distance of like x plus two. This implies that this cell has a minimum distance to a zero of x plus two, but it clearly has a distance of x plus one because it takes one cell to get to a cell of x distance to a zero. So in other words, we always have like x and x plus one, or we could have like x and x where they're just like two of the same numbers adjacent to each other. As seen, for example, like the, these two twos are adjacent to each other, these two ones are adjacent to each, other, to each other, and so on. So we know that this grid will always work um, because it also follows a second condition since the only cells that <clears throat> does, that is not strictly greater than any of its neighbors are the source cells, which are zero over here. So why is this the only possible way to assign all these numbers to a specific grid? Well, the reason why is this. Let's assume we were to make, um, so, like for example, this one, we wanted to make it to some larger number. If we made it to two, then two would be adjacent to zero, which we, as we mentioned earlier, is impossible. So it has to be one. And so we can't make any number bigger, or like specific, more specifically, any number that's not with like this given subset of zeros. We can't make that number bigger than it already is from this BFS distance as zero. And we can't make it smaller either because that will imply that there will be some subset of zeros. There will exist a zero that is not in the specified subset of zeros over here. And because, and that essentially breaks our assumption. So because of that, that's also not valid. So that's kind of a rough explanation why this is the only possible configuration. So what will that final formula look like? Well, because we know that the only thing that matters is um, how many empty cells exist, we let k equal to this frequency of these empty cells. Right? And so our final formula will look like, will look like this. We want to choose over all subsets 
of possible <clears throat> like pound signs that we can turn into zero, there are essentially two to the power k total subsets that we can force to zero and then create exactly one like BFS distance grid from that subset. And so this is the correct answer for almost all of the test cases. But there is one special case that you have to keep track of. And that's if the case where um, the input is entirely pound signs. Because you have to realize that any valid grid has to have at least one zero somewhere in this array. Or like not in the array, in the grid configuration. And this is because of the condition where um, there will always be some element that is not strictly greater than its neighbors. And we can show that that's true by contradiction. It's not a very complicated proof, so I won't go into it. Um, so yeah, basically if k, if k is equal to nm, it will n times n, we have to subtract one because we want to include the subset. We want to include the empty subset where we say that no zeros exist in this array. And the only reason why we only have to subtract one when k is equal to m and n is because if we had some zero already existing in this um, test case, then even if we make all of, a, all of these like pound signs not zero, we will still have at least one zero that's predefined. So in this case, the empty subset will be completely fine. So the final formula will look like 2 to the power of k minus the floor of k over n times m. And the floor function is essentially, it will return zero if this fraction is strictly less than one, and it will return one if this is equal to one. So yeah, that is a formula for problem E. And this obviously works in n times m runtime for each test case.